I'm on a very random and spontaneous trip to Miami. And I just checked out of my hotel. Uh, this is the JW Marriott. Not gonna lie, it's a little bit outdated. The hallways reminded me of The Shining, but it's okay, because my bangs are out. And today I got a point out. A point out. And I'm gonna go meet, oops, sorry. I'm gonna meet a new friend from TikTok. I'm so excited because we're talking about it. Using social media to find friends is actually kind of genius because it's like you have an online resume. Anyone can Google me and find out what are my interests. Frying my hair, fried dye blade to the side. Bailey understands what it means to be a bougie black girl who just wants to lay out in the sun and bake like a soft pretzel. I have my Chanel Bethlehem sandals on. Got my green nail polish. Some cute little bracelets that I got from the Aventura Mall at some stand. Just waiting. Let me give you guys a little commentary. Taxi! Look here in Design District. Um, how are you wearing? Oh my god! Who am I wearing? Um, Kelly, what are you wearing? Vintage Chanel from Tokyo. Konnichiwa! We have on Sink a Set. It's from Ooh. Neiman Marcus in Dallas, where I'm escaping soon. Shackles off my feet so I can dance. Cause I'm going crazy! What are we wearing today? Bonjour, je porte une robe from White Fox Boutique. Yeah. And the sandals are Steve Madden. Yes. And the bag of Louis Vuitton Yeah. And the glasses are from Grasson. What do you like most about America so far? I love how the American people persevere. Do you know Hoboken? Yeah. 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 Oh, Hoboken. I come visit you. You do. Walking across the drawbridge in Frickle. That's 
my yacht. What a beautiful day to be an anti-socialite. My only goal this year is to be skinny, well-read, and sit in the sun. Sit in the sun, you know, collect more Ralph's coffee hats. This is what life is about. Yes, this is what life is about. And I don't just mean laying out in the sun and baking like a soft pretzel, a beautiful golden glisteny soft pretzel. I mean understanding truly that health is wealth. Let me try to make this under five minutes because when I start talking like this when I'm editing, I want to just make a million points. The next thing you know, it's a 20 minute long video. Okay, get your popcorn, you know, we're at AMC. I talked about this on my TikTok as well as a different video. Speaking of social media, by the way, I got bullied into going back on Instagram, so we'll see how long that lasts. My Instagram is active right now, at the Kelly Sams. I'm probably gonna log out again. Um, I have a foot thing right now. It's called hallux limitus. Basically, it's arthritis, but it's so bad. Like, it really hurts. I'm not sugarcoating this. My bones on the big joint, I think it's called the meta something, metatarsal, I don't know, it doesn't matter. The big toe joint. A normal joint moves like that. Mine does move, but there's no cartilage in between anymore. I don't know why it happened. I, I really don't. It just happened suddenly on New Year's Eve. Snap, crackle, pop. Foot swelled up, went to the doctor. They confirmed with an x-ray. You just don't have cartilage in between. It's rubbing against each other. Now there's a bone spur. My foot's deformed. Okay. Um, probably from gymnastics. I guarantee it's from rhythmic gymnastics. Did a lot of weird stuff. Okay, you come up on your toes. Like you're on your knees. Put a video here. You're like coming up on your toes. Figure skating, all that. Started wearing high heels recently that were too high. And I have somewhat of a flat foot, which is really weird on the right foot, like my right foot is flat. So I inherited bad feet, whatever. My point is, I was told, going to all the doctors here in Dallas who are used to treating overweight people, overweight people who just don't prioritize their fitness here, it's just not a thing. Get on this medication, get on this one, get on this steroid. And you can probably already infer how I feel about that just a little bit from things I've said this year. I'm slightly skeptical. Whenever a doctor just shoves something in my face, if you have to convince me to take something, I'm just gonna be a little skeptical, right? Not one person, sorry, there's an eyelash in my eye. Not one person said, just get outside, be healthy, eat well. So I considered, you know, what's an environment where I was at my highest peak of health? It's when I lived in the suburbs of Miami. I lived in Aventura, by the way. I've never lived in Miami, just to be clear. So I know I made videos being like, oh, I'm in South Florida. I was in Aventura which is, you know, a quiet suburb. It's primarily Jewish. Shalom. I would live there again. It's just, I want to be in the heart of Miami. When I was there, I was so healthy. Same with New York City. Like, yeah, it's like a Petri dish. I got sick a lot, like with colds and stuff. But I mean, my body, everything was just good. And I had so much natural energy. I was walking like, I don't know, 10,000 steps a day, minimum. I looked at my health thing on the iPhone here. I walk like maybe 2,500 steps a day. And it's just from here to the fridge and back and then downstairs to the car, to the market, whatever. It's just not a good area to live if you need to be moving around. So the thing is, if a bad foot, you're probably like, well, Kelly, why are you trying to move around? When I decided to take matters into my own hands, yes, I might need surgery at some point to wear heels again, that is true. But why not introduce an anti-inflammatory diet? Why not just try motion? Because physical therapists, that's what they're there for. People diss them all the time. Like, oh, go straight to this, get this, get the surgery. A lot of things can be healed. So I start talking around, you know, whatever. I decided to just change my diet drastically. My hair is shinier, it's healthier. It grew back super fast, which is weird. I just cut it very short recently. Um, nails are growing, skin's glowing. I just feel very energetic lately and it's because I changed the way that I ate. But also I've been walking more. I've been forcing myself to walk a lot and when I was in Miami, like I didn't have any pain. It's weird. So I just feel like it's good for my now, you know, inflammation and stuff I have to deal with. Uh, number two, this is where I'm gonna get a little, a little sassy for a second. Bear with me. And I won't get too deep into it because I'll save it for my other channel. I came to Dallas in October because of what happened in LA. I was just like, what's this? Give me another city. Just literally anywhere because I had a very, negative experience trying to live in Los Angeles, where I'm from, by the way. I told you I encountered a certain category of people who don't like me, meaning I'm just not a victim. I'm very aware of issues in the world and stuff, but I don't walk around, 
you know, hoping, thinking of struggle. I'm like, struggle? Don't know her, not familiar with that emotion, like Joanna Scammer said. Basically, they like, you know, black people in California, as long as you're not doing better than them. I know it's like a nationwide or worldwide thing, but I'm telling you, like, I'm privy to the details on this because I grew up with it. It's just not a vibe, it's not a vibe. Um, so anyway, <sighs> there's a lot to unpack. I'm like, do I really wanna go in on this topic? I do. Basically, as a bougie black woman, who is that girl? I'm an it girl. And is it bougie black girl with bangs? There's a lot going on here. I know where I thrive, personally, in this country. You have to decide what type of discrimination do you prefer? The Northeast, like New England, they just don't look at you. They pretend like you're not there. They're uncomfortable, but they won't say anything. They're just kind of like, they just won't look at you. It's weird, it's rude. And then in California, they'll acknowledge you like, aw. That's why I like Florida. So how do we get to Miami? Everything I just said, Miami is, yes, it's a wild place. I don't think you should move there if you're like trying to build out your career. The salaries are terrible. Good thing I'm just looking for a part-time job anyway, just to, like I said, get my mind off things and just have responsibility again. Maybe I'll just walk dogs, who knows? Don't move there if you're trying to build. You go to Miami when you already have money. That is my opinion. You go there when you're settled or if you're in your career and you work from home, that's perfectly fine. It is so good for my arthritis. It is good for my skin. I have naturally dry skin, I don't know why. Thank goodness though, sidebar, Osea skincare. I just thought about this, Osea, I begged them, like, like please help me. Um, I want an IV in my arm of their um, body oils. So I begged them via email. They were so kind, Merry Christmas. They gave me a whole kit of all their skincare. Ooh wee, thank you. This is Christmas, I'm so grateful. So anyway, just random plug in here. This is not a sponsor, it's just something I like. I wanna share it with you all. Dry skin problems. Uh, being up here in Texas during the brutal, weird winter, not brutal, but just dry winter. Went to Miami, I'm not kidding, it fixed my skin like that. Uh, Florida, like I've said before, is a good place to live as long as you have realistic expectations. I will never again expect a city or a place to kind of like help with my walk with Christ or help with this or that. And my experience is that I really enjoy going to this one church that I've mentioned several times called Christ Fellowship. They have several locations. There's one in Kendall, there's one in like Palmetto, whatever. There's Coral Cables, I think as well. There's a lot. And for the first time in my life, I'm not kidding, in years, I met genuine Christian people. And I was going through this thing where I had like a health thing and the, not the pastor, but he leads like the young adult group, his wife, genuinely prayed for me, checked in on me. It was the only genuine experience I've had, minus one church in New York City. Hello. Um, hey, Andy. Pastor Andy, not you. You're fine. <laughs> but there was this church, and I just felt like it's not all that, you know, weird riffraff here in the South where people are so focused on, like, not riffraff. It's not the right word to use, but I just say riffraff. Riffraff means ghetto, but this is not ghetto. I mean, like, all the fluff. Riffraff meaning, like, weirdly worshiping the pastor. Like these pastors are acting like they're Beyonce, like on stage, it's really weird. And I just see right through it. I don't know, guys, I have discernment. I hope you all see it too. I don't wanna like make you feel bad if you go to one of these like massive churches because I think you can enjoy your experience if you have strong sense of discernment. But more often than not, it's all just this weird idolizing of the person speaking. And again, idolizing marriage to look good for others when in reality our only goal should be to get to heaven. Like the reward is heaven. It's not, I'll be happy when I get married. I'll be happy. It's like, I'm happy right now. It'd be cool if I got married. Like I'm excited for that. I definitely think God is preparing me to be married soon. However, if it doesn't happen, I'm perfectly, look, I got the doge, like we're good. We're perfectly fine. So it's just interesting. Going through all these changes, realizing a lot of stuff, just about you know being a woman, what that means. In conclusion, I picked Miami because I'm in pain and I feel like increasing motion in the joint is good for me. Um, it's a beautiful city. Like I said, I looked crazy for the past few months because I didn't even realize it. I was just becoming very stationary. I gained weight, but not the good kind of weight. Like, oh yeah, as a woman, you gain weight. I mean, like I developed like a weird pouch on my stomach. Now it's gone. Like I just, I need to be in an environment where I feel 
slightly competitive with fashion. I like to see people looking nice. Um, they're just happy. They're just chilling. And because I don't have an ego, like, oh, I'm better than you because I'm American, I like it there because I'm like, I can learn from you and you and you. And they all have beef with each other, by the way. It's just kind of funny. Like all these ethnic groups there have beef with each other. Like Cubans got beef with these people and his white ones got beef with these people. They're all like, there's a lot going on. And I will say the older generations are very rigid and like psycho, but I'm not talking to random, you know, elderly Cuban men at a coffee shop. Like I'm not like on the one occasion that I did, he was ranting about, you know, communism. And I was honestly like, yeah, period. <laughs> like I hear you. I appreciate your struggles, your stories, because it's refreshing to me to confirm exactly what I think, which is that our generation has become very spoiled, albeit it's hard. It's very hard here. As an adult, I don't understand how any of you are able to survive, how I would be able to survive if I didn't have the internet, being completely honest. Like, you don't get rich anymore at a nine to five. You can in the right field, but the American dream, what do they say? You have to be asleep to believe it. Like, you need to be a business owner today or have generational wealth or both or marry into it. That's just my reality. That's what I've realized. You can fight me on it. If you disagree, it's fine. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to go to Miami. I have had a lot of personal growth. I think it's what you make of it. I don't care about the city, don't care. It's not about the city. It's just where I'm at in this point in my life. I wanna grow, I wanna feel good. I made a new friend. Hey, Bailey. I've made several new friends, in fact, who just are on the same wavelength and point in time that I'm in. That's what's important and I said this before on a different video. This will be a different video. it will make a separate one. I'll come back to this thought. Like in the past few months, I was kind of dimming my light for other people that I was meeting because they made me feel bad. Like, oh, you're an influencer. Like I have to actually go to work at my real job as a nurse. So I like, I feel like I couldn't express myself clearly. I couldn't, I was just afraid to tell them stuff. Good news. Cause I'm like, are you hating on me? Like, I know it's a weird situation to be in, but out there in Miami, People just have these wacky goals. And like, I want the kind of friends with big goals who are like, yeah, I wanna be a pop star. And I'm like, let's hit the studio. I'll help you record. Like, it's just inspirational. Like Bailey has good energy. Um, she gets it, she gets it. Um, just outgoing. Obviously Miami has a lot of scams and that's true, but I'm like, just keep your eyes peeled. I'm not gonna let my guard down, but also just, you know, take it for what it's worth. But most importantly, People who have big goals. Dallas is just the way it is. There's nothing wrong with it. Don't penalize Dallas people. But their goal is literally to rush to get married and have several kids before even getting to know the person. And then they realize, ooh, I liked the idea of you. I didn't really like you. Then they get divorced and then they're on hinge. Looking for someone with a clean slate. <laughs> Sounds personal. Yes, it's happened. It's just, it's not the vibe. It's not. So yeah, I'm really excited. A lot has happened. I wish I talked more about these changes throughout the process, but sometimes you kind of just gotta roll with it and not tell the internet. And yeah, that's everything that I've been dealing with, just realizing and going through. So stay tuned for my next video. I'll be doing a glow up video. Just a glow up, a full glow up. Goodbye. Okay,